also possible, then yeah, if he plays at this level now, he should win a couple of matches at least. Let's let's hope they will fix the draw. <laughs> <laughs> well, talking of draws, let's go over to Rome because the draw is out. I'm sharing it on the screen right now. Oh. Rafa is going to get a qual a qualifier in the first round, uh, and we'll uh, then kind he... to Novak. Not kind for Novak. No, what's he got in the second round? Safi Yulin as a potential second round or a qualifier. Who would that qualifier will be? Don't then maybe know. There, there is Mensik, there is Serundolo Kachanov, Ruth, maybe the toughest quarterfinal possible, along with yeah. Tsitsipas, one of the two. <sighs> yeah, know. so basically, it's, it's looking, at his, kind, you know. looking at his quarter, the names that jump out to me Kasper Ruud, who beat him, of course, in Monte Carlo recently. Xi uh, Xing Sheng is not in the best form, so maybe it shouldn't be so concerned about him. Ben Shelton can can bring it, but maybe not so much in Rome. Maybe more like in Madrid would have been more suitable for him. Hatchinov, who we just mentioned, I remember that Hatchinov uh, Djokovic match at the French Open last exactly. year. It was a really good, really good encounter. Yeah, basically the, the toughest moment because, yeah, there was the, yeah. the match with Alcaraz. They were once at all at a moment, but then Alcaraz got cramping. So yeah. it was really the toughest moment for, for Novak. He because lost the he first was... set and he and also then lost. He, he was in the tiebreak in the fourth. second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, he he won the tiebreak seven love or one, but he was mm. at the moment in the tiebreak, and so you know the second set was also very very close actually. So maybe I I think that that tiebreak was maybe the toughest you know score situation he found in the last French Open. So uh, yeah, but because Kachanov is one of these players that you know you have to be uh, to be ready maybe. Also, at the same speech, maybe Djokovic faces Kachanov in the final at the French Open, and it's way easier. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. It's it's not that easy, let's say, for him, because I also think that maybe he can, you know, maybe get better as the tournament progresses. Who knows? Uh, yeah, but overall, you know, there are a lot of interesting things about this draw. For example, there's this City pass Rublev quarterfinals, which can feel maybe a, a big opportunity for both. Yeah. Um, I don't want to to be, uh, you know, let's say, um, uh, <laughs> but getting higher in the ranking, even if you don't get to world number four, maybe you can still be a top four seed at this French Open if someone withdraws. So it's it's not a thing to, to not consider, especially if you are someone like Rublev, who uh, has lost 10 quarterfinals at slams, usually facing players like Sinner, mm -hmm. uh, Djokovic, Medvedev. So if suddenly you, you have an opportunity to be the fourth seed at the French, <laughs> it's you know, suddenly you can have a draw that allows you to finally break this this new ground. It, there are a lot of opportunities Definitely. for these players. Yeah, true. So I guess let's just, I mean, we're, we're guessing here, but uh, at the moment uh, we've got the top four pretty secure. But of course, with, their, with health issues uh, regarding at least three of the four, you know, as you say, getting to world number five after this event for Sitsipas, I guess it's available, Rublev maybe. Maybe Kasper Ruud, all, all of these players potentially could get to world number five if they won the title in Rome? Maybe it depends on what Zverev does also. Okay, I yeah, guess. Zverev as well, of course, you know, yes. Uh, he, he had not, you know, an outstanding performance last year in Rome, Zverev. Okay. So it's not really looking easy, but, you know, you never know. The higher you be, you, you are in the ranking, the better it you. can be for you. He's in Novak's quarter. So as you rightly pointed out, um, Novak's quarter is tricky. But actually, the to the, to the quarterfinal, I'm looking at Kasper Ruud here, and his potential opponents don't look too scary for Kasper. You know, he's obviously got the bye, then it'll be Ketsmanovic or a qualifier. You know, Manorino, Thompson, Monfils are all in, in that section. Kotov, Mikkelsen, Jan, Galan. These are not players that... that that I would but even also expect. A fourth round, also a fourth round potential against Shelton. Oh, is that Shelton the Shelton? Ah, uh, yes, Shelton yeah. is in his part. Of course, yes. Okay, yeah. yeah but, but still, that's it's... still not too bad. 
Cal- the Casper we've seen this year enters this match as a favorite. Mm. And it, it also, especially like, on the wrong clay. So, uh, with Shelton, there's not a guarantee that he'll get to that stage. Yeah, also, also. So, mm, for example, I mean, Kotov, you know, is a, a tricky player. Yeah. Uh, right yeah, now, I'm, I'm looking. Troy at... is not that bad. <laughs> I'm looking at Casper getting to the quarterfinals anyway. I mean, I mean, it's not the biggest prediction ever, but I'm also looking at his matches. Depending on who the qualifiers are, that does, that will make a difference. But um, right now, I'm thinking... Yeah, yeah, I actually like Rublev's draw a lot. Okay, let's have a look at I Rublev. Say, yeah, yeah. Fulcevic, Giron, Jari, whose form is not great at the moment. Artafi, similar. Awesome. Arnaldi, Mahach... Yeah, Berrettini. Good to see Berrettini in a draw. All Italian. Who's he playing, Berrettini? Hang on. Is he playing? Napolitano. Napolitano. There we go. So, yeah. Yeah, Maybe Arnaldi in round three (laughs) for Berrettini. Maybe uh, Italian after Italian after Italian. Could be, yeah. It's not a a bad draw for Andre. In my opinion, among the top four seeds, he's probably the one with fewer, uh, you know, big threats. Mm, earlier, considering the form, at least, then maybe you know, Jan Leonard Struff second round potentially. Mm. Yes, exactly. Mm. I mean, also Struff is uh, playing cash in. But the first also season. Tsitsipas, pass. You know, it's not that that quarter, in my opinion, mm, doesn't feel that bad for for both because. Uh, yeah, there's this second round against Struff, but then if you win that. Doesn't look impossible, you know, to look forward for what what's next. Uh, for example, if we see the last quarter, yeah, Medvedev, there is, you know, oh, uh, yeah. Tommy Paul Olgerune, um, Urkacz, you never know. Oh, Nadal, Nadal, he's Nadal. there. Yeah, yeah, he's got a qualifier. Uh, a ah, qualifier, okay. Yeah. I was looking Sabre Twilled. <laughs> no, no, yeah, qualifier, yeah, yeah, yeah. Qualifier yeah. then Urkac. Yeah. Let's see. Urkac in Rome in Rome has never done something, you know, unbelievable. <laughs> could have could have gone better oh, for sure. But could have got worse for you mean for Rafa? But could have done worse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so when actually when we sort of started this chat about the draw, I was thinking, yeah. Not bad. It, 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 like I was saying about Rafa and the French Open, and it could be a horrible draw, and then we're looking at an early exit. But if he gets a draw like he had in Madrid, or if he gets a draw like he's got here, uh, I think he'll fancy his chances to at least win a couple of matches, both in Rome and also in uh, in Paris. Although we don't know who the qualifier will be. We'll see who that turns out to be, so it could be a, a tricky one. But yeah, Rafa against her catch. It's yeah, it's probably a 50-50. So we'll we'll see if that match actually happens. As you say, Sabot Vilt is also in that section. Daniel Altmaier as well. Holger Runa is probably the last person I want to sort of talk about regarding, you know, where he's at right now and looking at Rome. Of course, he was a finalist last year, so he's defending a lot of points as well. His peak, and he's a contender for sure. But I don't know where we're at the moment with Holger. Uh, I'm looking at Altmaier as a kind of a scary opponent, (laughs) actually. Um, But yeah, it's very difficult to talk about him. Uh, mm, You know, if all these players play at their peak, you know, barring Nadal, which we know all this, uh, Rune is maybe, you know, the favorite to to get to a quarterfinal against, you know, someone like Medvedev or I don't know. Uh, but you know re- about him there's a lot of mm, you know uncertainty always about which which rune will will show up uh i i'm not that optimistic right now uh no. not in a, not in the long term but in the short term you know if Absolutely. i have to analyze you know the chance for the next tournament or the next month uh I'm not having this feeling that something big is in in the making for the the, the upcoming you know events. Mm, but yeah, for sure, he's um, a tough opponent for everybody. And you know, I still 
wouldn't like to see him in the draw also because you know he he mentions a lot that he likes to play in Rome and I I think it's right so maybe you know uh, playing there can you know make him feel comfortable the the conditions can suit him well he he has a lot of support from from the crowd also uh, I was there last year uh, so you know I I understood that he 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 actually is one of the the protected guys from from the Italian crowd. So okay, um, let's see if he can can use this <laughs> as you know he's also one of these player who tends to um, to be even a better version of himself in the you know hot. Uh, environments uh, and so let's just see it's difficult really to to talk about him i maybe we'll talk about him right now as the, as the dark horse maybe even if you know he feels bigger than uh, yeah. the, the 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 expression dark horse feels like but considering how we did so far in the year probably dark horse can can feel uh, you know like that you know he's a player that if he peaks he can be can be scary for for everybody. If not, he can also lose early. Um, so yeah, Medvedev That's defending champion. Uh, we obviously with his injury concerns, but he'll have potentially Jack Drape or Borna Chorich in the second round. Um, yeah, I don't know if you've got a feeling for a particular player going into this tournament. Obviously, Mario, you're off to Rome tomorrow. Uh, to enjoy a couple of days uh, in the Italian capital. Um, uh, by the way, when I say off to Rome to enjoy, I, I don't mean he's going to go sightseeing and go around the Colosseum. I mean he's going to to the Italian Open. Um, Casper Ruud is somebody I quite like, but then there's Djokovic in the quarterfinals, and I know Monte Carlo went very well for Casper, but generally that's not a matchup that Casper enjoys. Uh Go on. I really have no feeling watching this Me? draw, my God, because uh, um, all the players are, um, you know, it feels like the, the two players who should be the most consistent ones are in the same quarter. Uh, you know, Rude, because he's been the most consistent one in the clay season so far. You know, yeah, he lost to Felix in Madrid, Totally, you know, okay as a loss, in my opinion, after, you know, what he did in the two previous weeks. And Djokovic, because we know that he's Djokovic. And actually, he wasn't, you know, he was actually better than usually in Monte Carlo this year. So maybe this is a good indication going into Rome. Who knows? So I kind of have this feeling. But at the same time, you know, I was liking Zverev's chances, but then in the end I saw that there in Avone, Shapovalov, these players who can, uh, you know, like Serundolo did in Madrid, can can trouble him. I didn't see I, I would have Rundle said Rublev, match. actually, okay. watching the You're draw. You're going to go for Rublev? You're going to go but for Rublev? But what he did draw. in Madrid then tells me, ah, will he do again? And also, you know, the illness will be fine. Uh, so it's it's very tricky uh, for me to I, I maybe to say Zverev, one name. Maybe it's Zverev, semi-finalist in the past in Rome. Uh, I think you, you mentioned the draw, but... It's uh, Zverev all... is a former champion. Oh, former champion in Rome. My goodness, sorry. Finalist the year, the year after, so yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I think he, he you know, and, and, and we often think about uh, Zverev and, and, and being obviously a big server. And we think about the hard courts in particular, but he's very, very good on the clay. And, and, and throughout Germany, actually, there's a lot of clay courts here. In fact, mostly clay courts. Yeah, I I, I, I think maybe I, I'm, I'm struggling, to be honest with you, Mario, because well, I, I think it can there's... be because overall it's maybe a, a tough clay court match, maybe in the third round if you get someone like Navone or Shapovalov. But then Bublik, but I don't see Bublik beating Zverev in Rome, actually. No. So Dimitrov I, is I already the quarterfinal. So. If he plays his normal level, he should get to the semis. So yeah, actually, yes. <laughs> if he plays his <laughs> normal I, level. To be honest, yeah. Yeah. So whereas you've got Tsitsipas would, would potentially play Rublev. I can see Dimonor in there as well. And well, Felix. at this point, I will say this because I have this thing in my head that Go. Uh, is 
um, we've got Tsitsipas um, breaking his bad momentum in Monte Carlo. We got the same with Ruvlen in Madrid. I'll say that we will have the same with Zverev in Rome. So maybe that's that's my pick. <laughs> yeah, mine too, with very little confidence, but it's mine too. Uh, listen, Mario, thanks for coming today and also enjoy Djokovic your... Djokovic in Rome, yeah? We don't have yeah. to underestimate him. Oh, listen, uh, Djokovic is just there and, and, and it's a it's an obvious possibility. Yes, exactly. It's an obvious possibility. Um, obviously, his first tournament back, you know, he wins a couple of matches, plays very well, and then suddenly you're looking at an unstoppable force. But right now, there's probably more doubts about Novak than there were in the last few years, at least, going into this tournament. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Sounds like a fire alarm. Anyway, on that bombshell, uh, Mario, I will bring this uh, to an end and uh, check out what that noise is and see if it is indeed a fire alarm. Please, everybody, give Mario a follow on the social medias, but in particular on Twitter at Mario BC. But B O C. Yeah, Here yeah. It's the the beginning of my surname, that's why. <laughs> beginning of your surname, exactly. And also give us, of course, a follow at Talking Tennis TT. Uh, we look forward, of course, to seeing Mario um, in the coming days and weeks, as I'm sure we will, as we build up also to the French Open. And everybody else, um, you know the drill. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell so you don't miss out on all things tennis.